I think this is the most challenging time of day. 40 minutes after lunch is okay, but now it's <laughs> now we should need a coffee break. I think that you have made an excellent program otherwise, but this was a complete disaster. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> definitely not. Um, I'm happy to continue after you, Rosie, also. You were talking about time uh, and the impact of time and uh, a little bit interested in space. And I think I will talk more about space, change in space in a way also. And uh, my name is Åsa Sundelin and uh, I'm from Stockholm University, Department of Education. And I hope I can keep this together now because I have a lot of impressions and I try, will try to <laughs> hold all the threads that I, I've been associating today also and to, not to be too much going outside and to, to um, associate too much. I hope I won't. But I feel also very happy to be here again. Uh, in Sweden we say, I feel that the career counseling community is a kind of a own uh, family. You have your siblings, you have your cousins, you have your relatives you haven't met and so, but you have a, quite a family feeling. And I, f I have kind of a feeling here in Czech Republic also that you belong to my counseling family as well, in a, well, in a way, since um, this, I counted, I sat here counting and I found out it was the eighth time I was here. And yeah, <laughs> meeting career counselors and uh, visiting quite many places also, and I'm happy about that. And I always feel that it's like a, a very nice meetings with you. Hello there, yes, I recognize you. <laughs> Also, I'm happy to see you. There. So, uh, so that feels good. Uh, I'm also nervous, of course, uh, talking, trying to talk about this and talking not on my own language. Also, talk, try to talk in English in a way that makes sense to me and to you, and not being able to put things to describe things like I would like to do, like many of the immigrants that I have done research on struggle with all the time also. That is one of the fundamental issues, actually, uh, in communication and the interaction with people. The feeling that you feel a little bit more stupid than you know you are, actually. So please excuse me. <laughs> I hope you can be <laughs> um, uh, kind to me. When I, you asked me if I could, was interested in participating here, uh, I suggested this, that what I could do is try to, to connect the local and the, glo the, connect the local and the global, the theme of the conference, uh, from the research and the projects that I've been involved in that is about career guidance and counseling with migrants and refugees also. And I think that that could, Maybe that could be of interest also, and I will try to say something about what we have learned in Sweden from career guidance and counselling with migrants, and also this Erasmus Plus project that I'm involved in, that aims to develop higher education courses for counsellors working with refugees also. Yes, I work at the Department of Education at Stockholm University. I'm a career counsellor, that's my sort of basis. Uh, now I'm a senior lecturer and I'm a teacher and a researcher uh, in this field. And I'm also a program coordinator for our undergraduate program for career, our career counselling program also as well. So, this is Sweden. This is the nations that, uh, the, um, the, in, in 2016, this was the way people that got uh, permission to stay in Sweden, this is the way it looked like also. In Sweden, about 17, almost 18% are born abroad. 18% of the population are, are born abroad. 
If you count, if you have parents, if when you bo both your parents are abroad, born abroad, 25% of the population has a foreign background, you can count on also. In 2015, of course, Syria was, uh, it was a big, uh, we have a huge influx of uh, refugees from Syria also, and this was the year they got the permission to stay also. So this shows sort of an, Im I think it is a good way of, of showing how the influx of immigrants look this year. And this year we had, usually we have about 20 to 40,000 people that um, come to Sweden every year. And this year we had about 160,000 160, people that came to Sweden in one. Yes, you know about that. I don't, I guess I don't have to tell. Or maybe I should. Because how many did you say today? Two, four percent immigrants in Czech Republic, was it? Yes, you are nodding, something like that. It's very different. <laughs> it's very interesting to come here and to notice this difference as well, as you may think when you come to Sweden, of course. Uh, these are the immigrants' birth country, uh, 2017. And uh, Syria is the biggest now. Finland used to be. Hi, Mika, you have come. Uh, hello. Finland was for a very, very long time the biggest immigration country in Sweden, but 2017 it changed and Syria is the biggest is the biggest group now. Then we have the Swedes coming back, been living abroad and coming back also. That's the second biggest group. It also reflects that we, all, we have refugees, immigration from refugees, labor, but we're also from labor, student, uh, relations, family uh, migration also. But these are the countries that, uh, uh, the biggest countries in, uh, in order, you could say. Syria, Sweden, Afghanistan, Iraq, India, Poland, Iran, Eritrea, Somalia, China also. <clears throat> a good mixture. Um, would you like to do an exercise? Yeah. How many wants to do an exercise? Majority. Majority speaks. Okay. So what I would like you to do is to pick up an, a piece of paper. Do you have papers nowadays? Yes, an empty paper also. So I would like to, you to take an empty paper. Can you find one? Yes? That's good. <clears throat> and... Uh, the next thing I would like you to do is to tear the paper in three pieces. So you get three pieces also. Do you have that? Okay, you have three pieces of paper. What I would like you to do is, on the first piece of paper, I would like you to write down something that you like to do, something that is important to you and that you like to do. It can be whatever, whatever. Something you like to do in life. Have you found anything? Yeah? Then you put it aside. And uh, on the second paper, you write down a place that is important to you. A place you like to be where you spend time. A place that is important to you. And uh, could you think about some place? Yes? Uh, yes. 
place. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not in, I feel that I'm not really inside, down in my feet yet. I, prob I hope I will be because we before we finalize. And on the third, uh, I would like you to write a name of a person that is important to you. A person, one person that you can choose. Only one, this time. Only one. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Now I would like you to take the first piece of paper where you wrote something you like to do and to tear it apart because you are not, it won't be possible for you to do this thing anymore. And uh, now I want to, to take the the second paper where you wrote a place that is important to you, where you spend time, guess what you're going to do? Yeah, you will have to tear it apart because you cannot go there anymore. And unfortunately, I will, uh, you will have to tear the last because you won't be able to meet this person anymore, live anyway, also, in real life, also. I know it's not possible. <laughs> and I would like you to discuss also what you felt, what you, th what you felt when you did this, and, what you, and also connected to career issues. What do you think, how, what do you think about how does this affect people's meaning making about life and about future? So I just want to share your thoughts and experience from doing this with each other a couple of, a couple of minutes how did it feel and just reflect on and what about career in relation to this so please discuss take a neighbor also Okay, I will uh, interrupt you. You can talk a lot, and I think you can talk more further on also in the breaks or something about that. I will try to interrupt you. Now I forgot. This is what you never do with Czech people. Don't let them start talking. They will continue forever. <laughs> and you want to get them back. <laughs> that is the case. <laughs> okay, I will continue anyway. Uh, were there some of you... Did you feel anything doing this? 
Were there anyone that you felt something doing this exercise? Oh, sorry, you have to put on your headphones. <laughs> yes, some of you are nodding. Of course you did. Of course you did. Also. So, to summarize, uh, many people that are migrants have experienced a lot of losses in different ways and a lot of challenges. And uh, migration is a condition for, f for future, especially with, when you're talking about this, no, you cannot say involuntarily <laughs> migration, but more when you have a kind of a refugee mi mi migration also. You can describe it as that you are in a transformative learning. Um, when, so like to describe that the individual, it's a very, uh, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy. It's very, it's both an emotional and cognitive process that you are involved in. That is, and uh, Ilaris, he writes it like, the individual becomes aware of that new knowledge doesn't fit with earlier understanding. And you also have these, um, what is the word uh, when you have experienced a lot of hard things? Påfrestning in Swedish. Mm. Mm? Traumas, traumas, sorrows, uh, difficult things that affect your uh, person also, that you have to struggle on on a personal level, both from the meaning migration process, both from leaving the country, from the, the, the refugee ship, and also from arriving in the new country, the loss of belonging, and you have different career experiences and values that are not valid anymore in the same way. And as you could see from the, uh, from what countries these, uh, the most of the migrants come from, they come from countries with a completely different education systems sometimes. The labor market doesn't look in the same way, you don't, you're not used to apply for work in, in, um, uh, in a way that is relevant in a way also. And you also of course have this language issues also. Uh, in Sweden the newly arrived migrants, they have to learn when they are young, they have to learn both, maybe they have to learn an alphabet, they also have to learn Swedish and English also. And quite often you have a completely different language also. So there are many learning processes. Besides, if you have to have a grade in idrott, um, athletics, how do you say, sports? Sports, you say, in school, do you say that? Yes, yeah, sports, you need to be able to swim also. So you have to learn to swim as well. You have to, all this you have to do at the same time, expected to. <clears throat> and uh, Fatima, a, st a student in my study that I did, she described this very well when she said, if I compare, it's not so easy to come here and know nothing and haven't been in school in home country and then start to learn Swedish. It's not so easy to study fast. But it takes time, I know. If I compare here in Sweden, it's very difficult to get a job. They will ask, do you have an education or something? Life here is so strange. But the irony is, I would say also, that the migrant situation, the interface between the global and the local, when counseling migrants and uh, the new society meets in counseling session, that it's counseling with migrants both highlights and illuminates general issues that are present in every counseling situation. It's about language and knowledge asymmetries in these meetings that are <laughs> um, present otherwise as well, although your client is not a refugee, but they are there, still there. There are power relations, I didn't get that on the uh, on the picture, but it, of course the power relation that is different. You have differences in expectations and the roles, what you're going to do. You have to negotiate values and opportunities that are uh, relevant for the, for the career counseling. And there is also this uncertainty and anxiety about the future that is always present, but in the meeting with career counseling with migrants, especially with refugees, this is sort of get an extra light on it also. 
this is what is uh, the questions that become visible are relevant in all meetings. So that's why it's a very good learning opportunity, I would say. I would come back to that also, because it's like it's a learning for both the society. When you're, the multicultural society is expanding, is for the career guidance and counseling settings, of course, because the migrant situation really has put uh, career guidance and counseling on the agenda in Sweden. It has helped us. It helps us to develop the field because we need to do that also. We need to do new things. We need to new, find new ways to communicate, to support people, to enter the labor market, to pass through educational systems also. So it's a really um, um, it gives gives it's a um, catalysator. Can you say so? Catalysator for learning and for the career guidance and counselling field, also. So those tragedies, in the same way, supports this our our field and contributes to our uh, development of knowledge and understanding about what we are doing and why we are doing it and how we are doing it also. So it's a learning process, I would say, for the society, the career guidance and counselling setters, career counsellors, and of course for the immigrants, but not only for the immigrants, of course, because it's quite easy that we talk about learning from the immigrants' perspective. But a lot, as a counsellor said that I had an interview, counselling migrants implies, working with migrants implies a lot of learning for the counsellor as well all the time, trying to understand who are you, where do you come from, what do I need to do, how can I support you, what are your references also, because you cannot ever take it for granted also. And you're, you're challenged. So it's, I think it's a way that we quite often use Cole, his uh, experiential learning theory to describe lear when learning takes place, and it's like usually you just you experience something and you reflect on it, and then you do the same things. Ah, oh, this doesn't go too good, but it's okay in a way. But this situation, we need to understand what career guidance and counseling in a new way. And we need to do new things to get new experiences also. We cannot just talk about what, ah, this is okay, I would do this, I couldn't really answer this question. But, but here you have really to find new ways. How can I communicate when we don't have the same language? when we don't have the re same reference uh, points also to depart from. <clears throat> and uh, I think it, this is a good quote also that PV and Lee wrote, that there is often a straight transfer of common counseling methods to intercultural meetings, but they mean that counseling needs to be deconstructed for intercultural context. In order for counselling to respond to the needs of different groups, the practice and its assumptions must be critically reviewed and developed. And I think that this situation really helps us to do this. And I think that's quite amazing, actually. And the counsellors that I talk to, they say that when I get better at counselling, working with my immigrant clients, I become very good with my clients with a Swedish background also. I do more um, creative things because I have had to invent more creative ways of working also. So it's not only the migrant clients that benefit from this situation, but everyone does, I would say. And, uh, <clears throat> ah, what time is it? It's okay, uh, you d I don't think so, because I, I have so much to, I would like to share now. Now I'm getting into myself, <laughs> I know. so now I can go on. Uh, but uh, one thing that has happened that we got involved in is this seminar, it's an Erasmus Plus project that aims to provide pilot courses of higher education and further training to strengthen career counselling in coping with new challenges that arise from a growing population with, with refugee background. And we are uh, six universities involved in this pro project, and we have produced, we, the intention is to produce a course and to produce a lot of material to train career counsellors. And on the website of the project, all the material will be available for everyone that is interested in these issues also. 
And I would say that, so we have, can you see this? Maybe it was a little bit small. I was trying to be, uh, to use. We have done, we have done reports of literature on this subject, career counseling migrants. This is a, uh, national reports and a transnational report as well that is available on the website. We have done a needs analysis analysis from career counselors, also a report that is available. We are trying to develop higher education course with course material and that will have a media center and a web portal also. You can look on this website if you are interested also. You can seminar is the uh, acronym, the name of the project. But what we have... Oh. Yes, this is what, what do counsellors need to know to work with career guidance and counselling practice. You need to know a lot about career counselling conversations. This is general issues. What I want to point out, because I have to be a little bit more on the spot, that the uh, one big field is that career council need to be able to support learning about career issues to support the clients to develop a local know-how. And this, I think this is very important because um, quite often you talk about help people to increase their self-knowledge, self-awareness about what they want to do. But at, at least in Sweden that career counselors lack skills, I would say, quite a lot in how to support learning about career issues. How do I talk about career opportunities? How do I talk about career education? How do I talk about professions with my clients? Who do I, how do I talk about the system? How do I help people to understand uh, the context they are supposed to navigate in also? So this is, uh, the di that this is quite an important matter, the didactic competence for, to increase uh, career counselors' didactic competence in career issues also, how to manage this and to talk about it. And uh, uh, to do, do, we, we skip that, because we also, we have found out in studies that the learning dimension in career guidance and counselling is like almost like a blind spot, we would say, in the field of career counselling. It is like the professional language for learning processes seems to be limited. Career counsellors, also in Sweden, in Sweden career counsellors are trained within the field of education. But anyway, the language to talk about career guidance and counselling is a lot of influence from the psychological field. Also, we talk about listening, we talk about dialogue, self-awareness. And it seems like counselors may lack the possibility to pay attention to clients' learning processes. And they also can have difficult to support learning on career issues in career guidance and counseling conversations. They also use a language about information that I... I will provide the clients with information about this also. They don't talk about, I will support my clients to learn about these issues. So instead of talking about what kind of information will I provide, it's not how can I support client, clients learning on these issues? And how can I be sure that clients have learned what I thought was important, that might be important. <clears throat> and uh, we mean that career guidance and counseling with migrants really helps us to develop this field. And uh, career counseling with migrants seem to both highlight and contribute to deeper understanding of learning dimensions in counseling. And I saw in my study that one of the counselors' key functions in conversations was that of being educative in education system, career opportunities, and societal structures of career possibilities, among all, to support, a lo to support the client's local know-how, also, you can say. And, but what we also saw 
was that career guidance and counselling was, in my study with the newly arrived migrants, career counselling in the upper second, career guidance and counselling in upper secondary level with newly arrived migrants, I could see that the conversations either more had a more guiding function, helping the clients in their career decision making, or they had, or mostly, foremost, they were about this career learning also, that the conversations had a sort of an educative function also. And, the, and they did this, the counselors worked on these issues in different ways, but foremost, the training was, about, the counseling was about supporting the client's career learning also. But what also was shown was, no, no, let me see if I, that they were integrating these parts quite a lot. They, when they were counseling their clients, they were also at the same time sort of expecting them to make decisions upon it. And it became quite obvious that this is very, very, it's a very, very complex situation when you need to, when you are trying to understand a system and at the same time are expected to sort of uh, relate the content to yourself and to make decisions. And it was, and uh, I had some good examples when the, the, the teenagers, they, they really protested against the counselor tried to go from a career, career learning um, function in the counseling session to a more career decision making. They had been exploring what kind of jobs are there and so, and then she wanted him to, so what do you want to do? And he said, no, 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 I want to go on here. I want to learn more about this because it's another, it's another process you're into if you're about to learning or about decision making also. But, and that is quite interesting because when I discuss this with Swedish counselors, in a way, they are not aware, they don't think about if they separate this or not in the conversations. They don't think about when do I support career learning and when do I support career decision making. But for these clients, these clients with a migrant background that also has language to struggle with, it becomes extremely demanding if you are expected to do this at the same time. So what we also found out that it's important to separate learning and decision-making processes in career, on career issues along a conversation, within the conversation, but also inside and outside uh, conversations also. So it's extremely, so what I think this is contributing with now is that we are developing more methods and tools to support learning in the classrooms with the, on career issues, in the classrooms with teachers and everything, and not having people to decide, not making all these uh, career issues personal all, all the time, rather making it as a knowledge field and not having to choose, what do you think? Is this for you? Skip that part. You need to understand first, how, how does it look like? What does it look like? How do, and then, let it take time also. Yes, my time is out, is it? Yes. <laughs> um, so I said, it will be some bonus material also. Uh, I can show this one as well. What they did, one, I can show this one before we leave. This is a glossary on career vocabulary that uh, teachers and career counselors worked with together with a group of migrants. They, uh, the, the teacher, she noted all the difficult words that the career counselor used, and then they made a glossary, and they translated it into the different languages that were, uh, that were to be found in this group also. Because it's not only words, it's about systems that go with the words as well also, that you need to understand to be able to understand 
what the choice is and how you make choices, for example, to up a secondary level in the Swedish school system compared to your, if you're from Afghanistan or if you have and never ever been to school also. So we become clearer. We need to be clearer. We have to be more explicit all the time also. So it's really help, helpful, I think. Yes, I will. Yes, I, I am very good at planning, aren't I? <laughs> but I can hear come back another time. <laughs> but I can finish with this one. I like this heart and brain because what also is that it's very challenging. The situations for many refugees is very challenging due to many things also all day. And I think that the counselors very much can feel that they are not enough and they meet a lot of tough stories in the work life and it's hard to to be able to support in the way that you would like to. And here, Hart says, I'm going to bed, wake me up when the world is fixed. Sorry, Hart, the, we the world needs you. And it could be, sorry, counselor, the world needs you. And the migrants definitely do that also. And we do need the migrants to develop this field. So, thank you. <laughs> tak já, jestli máte někdo otázku rychlou, klidně ji položte. I try in English. Big challenge. Um, for the last year or year and a half, I've been working with migrants, not refugees. And I think uh, from the long point of view, it's a question of values. For the migrants, and for me as a counselor also. Yeah. For me, it's a big issue I, I, I've got from this year, and year, or year and a half, that um, it needs a big, huge work to, um, to uh, manage the conflict of values the migrant is coming to me and my values. Uh, it was a big uh, challenge for me and I'm not sure I've finished no. it. <laughs> you, you haven't talked about it. Uh, there was a, a slide about uh, counselor's needs. Mm. And for me, on the first place are the values. Mm. The you. you said the needs or? The counselor's needs, yeah. The counselor's to, needs of? To have a lot of Vision and, uh, yeah. coaching and everything mm. to uh, manage the value question. Yeah, to manage value question or the contextual, the institutional preconditions that can be very tough in our circumstances, yes. Yeah. So it's... I don't know if I am understandable. Uh, about the people, uh, migrants, uh, yeah. who are coming uh, with values mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, in conflict with our institution yeah. and uh, lo uh, basic uh, human rights. Yeah, that can be very... So uh, mm -hmm. for me it's a big, a big um, uh, challenge to uh, support people, not refugees, migrants. Mm, migrants, in general, it can be refugees, it can be uh, migrants, yeah. uh, it doesn't me, matter. It's a no. different class, refugees no. uh, are uh, running uh, uh, from war on I don't know what, so mm. it's a little bit different, but migrants. Maybe, no. Yeah, okay, so uh, I, I think the values, uh, uh, the, the counselors needs, uh, need um, uh, a lot of support. Uh, yeah. To work on this uh, and to how to manage, this. because there can be values that are unnegotiable in a way, also in a society yeah. that you have to, and how you can manage those issues. And, and it's the, very. Yeah, and and I, the migrants, I think, need uh, a lot of um, uh, education uh, in uh, that field, in um, active citizens, in democratic uh, values. Uh, so it's not just about the language and swimming and, and this stuff, but about the basic. Mm. Definitely. From the long term of view. It's both. I would say it's not, it's, <laughs> it's both and they go Yeah. 
you miss the educational values in the Czech Republic. I think so. Mm. Mm. You don't support them in that area, no. We can discuss it during symposium, yeah. uh, because it's a perfect topic for discussion during yeah. symposium tomorrow, mm. I think. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you very much, yeah, because no we have to go no, to no, last no. presentation. If you have anyone, please.